We'll begin this question by doing an illustration showing what happens as this loop of wire is falling into the magnetic field. So we have the magnetic field here and imagine that the loop of wire is slowly going down into the magnetic field. As that happens, we know that there's going to be an induced EMF simply because the flux going into this loop of wire is increasing. So it started from no flux into some flux, meaning there is a change in flux. When there's a change in flux, we know that there's going to be an induced EMF, an induced current, as well as an induced magnetic field. All of this will happen so that it counteracts the change in flux. So next, let's figure out which direction the current will be going. Now the current is going to run in a clockwise direction. The reason for this is because as the loop of wire is falling down into these green dots, which is the B field coming out of the page, more and more dots are going to appear inside of this loop of wire. Now we have to abide to the law of conservation of energy. It can't keep increasing and increasing indefinitely. So what has to happen according to Faraday's law is we need something that will slow the change in flux. And that will be the induced magnetic field that'll be going into the page. So an induced magnetic field has to form and that magnetic field will be directed into the page. So we need to figure out which way would the current have to run, which way would the current have to move so that inside of the square loop of wire, the magnetic field will be directed into the page. And using your right hand rule, you can take your thumb and if you run it throughout the square loop of wire in a clockwise direction, you'll find that your fingers will curl into the page and that'll prove that the current needs to run in a clockwise direction. So we need to know, next we'll bring up the magnetic flux equation. So we know that the magnetic flux is equal to the, the magnetic field times the area times the cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the surface normal. The area in this system is the length of the wire times the width of the wire. The angle between the magnetic field and the surface normal will be at zero degrees from one another. Now we'll bring up Faraday's law, which is the induced EMF is equal to the change in flux. The negative sign simply represents Lenz's law. We won't focus on the negative sign for this question, and instead look at the other variables that are causing a change in flux. Right here, the magnetic field and the width are not going to change. What is changing, however, is the length. The length is not growing, but it is, in, it is changing as it goes down this path. And when that happens, we could simply rewrite that as the velocity. Now we'll use Ohm's law, and we'll go ahead and substitute for the current. We're going to make a little note by putting a number one right by this equation because this is going to appear later on. Next, let's look at the diagram once more. So again, the loop of wire is falling down into the, into the magnetic field like this, and we know that the current, the induced current, will be moving clockwise. With that in mind, let's go ahead and draw the forces that are acting on this system. So right here, we have the force of gravity acting in the y direction, pulling it down. We have a magnetic force from the bottom of the loop of wire going upwards. And in the x direction, we have two other magnetic forces that are pointing inwards, but those are going to cancel each other out. Now, where do we get the magnetic forces? Well, if you use your right hand rule and focus only on this B field coming out of the page and this current right here, you take your right hand and point your finger in the direction of the current, and then you point your middle finger in the direction 
in which the B field, you'll find that your middle finger will be pointed towards you and your pointer finger will be pointed to the left. Your thumb should be pointed upwards and thus the magnetic force on the bottom of the wire is pointed upwards. Now, you might be confused right now. Why are we using the magnetic field that's coming out of the page? I thought there was an induced B field that we have to consider. That is true. However, the induced EMF and the induced B field do not have enough of an effect that will produce a magnetic force that is stronger than the one that we have right here. So this one is the one that we'll take into consideration of. The one caused by the induced magnetic field is negligible. So now we'll write what the magnetic force is equal to. So we have that the magnetic force is equal to the current times the width times the magnetic field. Now we'll go ahead and take that equation that we found for the current and we'll make a substitution. We'll get now that the magnetic force is equal to the magnetic field squared times the width squared times the terminal velocity divided by the resistance. Next we'll sum up all the forces acting in the y direction by using Newton's second law. We'll go ahead and cancel the mass times acceleration because there is no acceleration acting in the y direction. And this is because when we're at terminal velocity, the magnetic force and the force of gravity are going to equal one another. We will go ahead and plug in what these forces are equal to, set them equal to each other, and go ahead and solve for the terminal velocity. So going back to part B and C, of this question. Part B is asking why the terminal velocity is proportional to the resistance. Well, recall that the job of a resistor is to limit the amount of current that passes through it. So if the resistance increases, the current will decrease. So when this happens, the loop of wire needs to acquire a greater terminal velocity that will create a large enough magnetic force to negate the force of gravity. Part C is asking why the terminal velocity is inversely proportional to the magnetic field squared. Well simply as the magnetic field decreases the terminal velocity will need to increase so that it creates a large enough magnetic field to negate the force of gravity. 